Welcome to the Higher Self Podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to help you unravel anything keeping you from a life of true abundance, joy, and happiness, which is your birthright. Each week, we'll bring in different guests specifically tailored to help you on your journey to discovering your higher self, whether it's spirituality, business, finances, health, or relationships, there are no topics that are off limits. So get ready and enjoy this week's episode of The Higher Self. Okay, guys, I'm excited about this one, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to rewind to about a year and a half ago, maybe a year ago, where I was like in despair. Jen didn't like me. I didn't know what to do. I wanted Jen to like me, and I needed some answers, and I needed some psychic help to figure out what the heck was going on. And I was feeling all miserable and depressed and all down. Anyways, I got a hold of one of the most special human beings on planet Earth. And she's here for this week's episode of The Higher Self. Peggy, how are you? Oh, my God. What an introduction. <laughs> right? You know, it's, you know, you're, you're, you've been, you were a special part of my journey. Mm -hmm. I, could rem I could remember, we're going to get into it. Uh -huh. I could remember the day when I, I knew Jen was the one. But she wanted to go out and date other people. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was like, okay, fine, <laughs> you can go. Yeah, that, that doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, you know, faking the funk. Yeah. And inside I'm crying. Yeah. Right. Right. And I was like, I was just like, you know, every day was a rough one. Yeah. It, it was rough for me because, you know, when you're, you're emotionally connected and involved, mm -hmm. and I felt like spiritually connected in that way, it was rough. And you helped me out so much. Yeah, I mean, I just remember the emergency coming across my phone. You don't know me, and I need help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty, and, I'm pretty demanding when I want something. I'm yeah. like, listen, just what will it take? Call me right now, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I think I was even in my RV, yeah. if I remember right, <laughs> having the conversation with you. <laughs> That's my right, problem. I remember that. Bobby was driving, I was in the path. I'm like, well, if yeah. you're willing to have the session while I'm in the RV, it's pretty desperate. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't care, just... just <laughs> Pull over, do something, yeah. but talk to me, please. Yeah, but I re just I remember feeling that deep connection with you, with her and you, the, the two of you, and how kismet it felt. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there is a divine timing that you of know course. we have to allow with everything. And I think you did a really, uh, clearly did a really good job <laughs> at yeah. at you know letting go and at the same time staying connected, which is not an easy path to ask, especially when you have that level of certainty that you did that she was going to be your life partner. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to be part of your story and 100%. being able to like, a hundred percent, be available be for that. You know, Peggy, it was, it's so interesting, and I get these questions all the time because mm -hmm. I know that like our relationship does something for people, yeah, and for people who are looking for relationship. And you know, sometimes I get these questions like, you know, you know, what do I do if I know it's the one, but it hasn't really connected yet, and mm -hmm. I feel so. Uh, I'm normally not like timid with my words, yeah. but I, I don't know how to explain this, but I have done enough spiritual work right. to, to be connected with the divine to where I knew, right. but I don't think a lot of people have done that work yet to really know, you yeah. know, and, um, well, yeah. I think, I think one way you find out whether or not you've done the work or not, please, is if you're if you have the capacity as you did to let go to let go because you have to let go and trust because there's a there's a lot of times in relationship where you see the potential i can be with that person i know this could be amazing and but there's a disconnect between the potential and the actual the actual of, of it happening and coming together right. and all there is to do is in between those two is to truly let go do your own work and trust that if that person is your person they're going to show back up and you're going to be in alignment. And if they're not, all the work that you're presently doing is going to realign and bring in the right person, exactly. the correct person. So all, all you have to do is, it's not easy, but it really is. All you do is let go. Yeah. And that's it. It's so true. Yeah. And, you know, and I, and I want to share a little bit about this yeah. particular scenario because I remember, you know, source, number one, source was preparing me and source clearly told me that I needed to go through a period of celibacy mm. and that was to, and I'm bringing this up because, you know, maybe somebody is out there that is single that could benefit from this. Um, this was my path and my journey. And I realized that that was because I want, I needed to like clear my energy to make space. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And then I felt called to do cord cutting. And I just, I just cord cutted anyone that I had ever been with. Right. And then I was getting very clear messages and very yeah. clear dreams and very clear. It, 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 it was almost as if that period in, in, in my life, um, I was also not eating any, any animal protein. So I feel mm. like I was just like, I was like, in you're the flying. High. I was flying high <laughs> half the time. Yeah. So that's what made it so difficult is that I knew. And even, you know, to the credit of what you're saying, Peggy, even in all of that knowing, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm literally to the point that I would ask source, just tell me now, is she the one, you know, in meditation and my head would shake yes. And, you know, point to my heart and like point my guy would start shaking and do all this stuff. I was like, fuck, I know she's the one. Like, why is this not happening? Yeah. But even in all of that, I was able to say like, I guess I just got to let go. Cause what else are you going to do? Yeah. You know, or drive yourself crazy. Or drive yourself crazy. Yeah. Or call somebody like me who's going to tell you the same thing you already know. <laughs> exactly. Let go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it is that right there is that's that's it in a nutshell. It, because you have to let go. The let go is what allows it to come in. Yeah. You know, because otherwise you're hanging out in that space of confusion and anxiety because the ego is like ready to go in the relationship and to build the relationship and do all those things. But if spirit's not ready for the two of you to merge, there, you know, it's it's a really painful place to be waiting for somebody. It's it's the worst. It really is the worst. So letting go and being by yourself is actually better. And it's also what's needed. You know, cutting all those cords is literally letting go and clearing that space. So it it really does allow God to bring you the right person and the right partner. And for you, it's it lined up beautifully. But I have seen some clients where when they've let go and they've let go of the one they thought it was, a whole new scenario happens because that person wasn't able to activate it. They weren't able to actually get an alignment with the timing or with that person and somebody new completely came in. So it's like what I say to people is like, you're going to have your happy ever after, right? right? With that le that level of energy, individual or better, right? you know? And um, and people don't want to hear that when they have their sights set on that particular person. person. But it makes it more painful to wait every single day with the anticipation or, or attachment. Mm -hmm. And that attachment is another problem, right? Having the attachment, that's... That's not letting go. <laughs> so really, you know, I don't know, maybe you can speak more to that, like how you actually dealt with the feelings of attachment, because most people have a really hard time with the let go because they are attached to the outcome. That's it. Or the vision. That's it. You know, yeah. you know, as you said that, I remember, uh, I think you know this, I was in real estate sales. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we spoke about- uh, I was too. Because you were there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So yeah. I was in real estate sales and I remember I used to work with buyers. And buyers would like get, you know, see a house. We take them inside. They get so emotional about yeah. it. I signed the contract. I, I knew in a hot market like California, mm -hmm. if they were asking 500,000 for the house, we'd have to offer 520, whatever. So right. I, I did my part to get them to like, like, like have their best foot forward to get sure. the house, you know, so forth and so on. And yet what I would do is before I left their presence, I would say, I want you to know something. You, you've empowered me now to go put my best foot forward to go get you this house. However, in all my years of experience, what I have always discovered is this truth. If this is the one for you, it will be for you. And it's not, it's because God has something even better for you mm -hmm. to help clear the attachment. Yep. Right? Yeah. And, it, and to help them to understand. And in many ways, it was like, it was, it was me showing leadership, Mm -hmm. understanding right and we get to hop into that space for ourselves as well yeah we get to be able to be the leader for ourselves so that you know when we are tested or put in these situations we're able to be unattached with the outcome yeah i think that's where we as human beings like that's where we have the most difficulties mm -hmm. is being attached to the outcome you know yeah because we want what we want that's right right but but when we let go and put our energy into a higher power maybe knows better than we do 
and maybe just may- maybe, maybe just maybe, maybe. maybe yeah. <laughs> when we do that, yeah. we can be surprised with even bigger magic. Like, wow, we actually got it, or something to your point, better has just shown up. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is it is an uncomfortable lesson, but a necessary one. Yeah. yeah. It's a great practice once you get the hang of it. Absolutely. I want to go into something that we spoke about briefly yeah. just before we turn the cameras on. And we were speaking about a friend and you, and you, I love how you said it. And I learned a lot from you and that normally I have to preface by saying things like, I don't mean to be egotistical or whatever. You just flat out said it. And you said it in a very neutral energy, you mm-hmm. said, you know, my friend, by being my friend, her spiritual gifts started to unlock and, mm-hmm. and awaken. And, and it allowed me to say, you know, one of the things that I have realized in my life is that people just being around me, like their financial life, their their energetic life, there's it just starts to unlock. Yeah. And we were able to have that little bit of a conversation. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned something that I think is going to be very beneficial to our audience. You said, well, you know, we're frequency mm-hmm. and we're in energy and you become like those that you associate with. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about, you know, when someone is ready to up-level their life, how important it really is to be in alignment with the right frequency based off of what it is that you want for your life. Yeah. Well, I think it's really important that when you just like trust what's happening for you and who's coming around you, right? Who's showing up around you. And when there's a a, a connection or a di- desire, we can all feel that, right? Like, can you feel the goosebumps coming in as we're talking about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you start to feel that deeper soulful connection And then you start to follow that and lean into that more. And the more that you allow yourself to trust those little feelings inside of yourself, they all like are little pearls, right? And they're leading us to the next best thing for ourselves. And so you could call that a frequency upgrade or or whatever, but it's like what I've noticed when when you know your what your gifts are, right? Mm -hmm. And you know yours, I know mine. mine. My strengths are that I actually help people understand their wiring, their intuition, their ability to know themselves, to feel themselves, to guide themselves. And so that's really my strongest sense. And so for me, it's not uncommon for my friends to say, I had a dream about you and you were in my dream and you told me this. Yeah, or suddenly, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah right? I get that too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you popped into my head. And in fact, I have a friend, um, Jen Drummond, who climbs mountains, right? Okay. And so she, I mean, she's got, Oh, six kids, Jen. You have seven kids. How many have seven kids? And she's this mountaineer. And so she has just accomplished the first woman to climb the second seven summits in the world. Like this just happened. And during that process, I don't remember which one of these mountains she was on. She came back. She almost died. And she said to me, Peggy, I had a Peggy moment. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Yeah. And she said, I, uh, we had a phone call from base camp saying, there's an avi- there's a storm coming in and we want you to abort the mission and come down the mountain. And they were at, I think, base camp two and they wanted to come back down the mountain and abort. And she said, let, just a second, she said, I had this energy or this feeling come over me. You popped into my mind. And I said to the team, just give me five minutes. And so she went and she sat down and she had got this download that instead of going down, what if we leave right now and we go up? And if we go up, maybe we can get up before the storm comes in and we can complete the climb and make it and then go back down. And so the whole team agreed. They climbed up. They they arrived there. And when they arrived there, they heard from Base Camp One again saying that had they stayed and not left or, or left when they were supposed to leave, an avalanche came and destroyed the Base Camp Number Two. Oh they would have all been killed. God. Yeah. So that was literally a life or death moment that she, it was a frequency, it's an energy that she associated with me, but it didn't, but but it was source working through, through, just like, oh, hey, this is, and so however it comes in to you knowing you, I take no credit for that, but it's the, it's, it's her understanding and her connection to a higher power. And in her mind, that higher, higher power was like, oh, this is what Peggy does. I, oh, there's an incoming message like Peggy does. I need to get my own incoming message. Tap in. Tap in. She got, And so I was like, oh, my God. She's so dialed in clearly. Obviously. Saved their lives, summited, came down. But, I mean, she has, I don't know, 50 stories. But, but to that point, 
that's our capacity. We have that ability to awaken that in other people so they can live a life they want. And I love those kind of stories when people get to discover their own power, their own intuitive connection with source and to be able to, yeah. in her case, not die. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. You're, you're, it's, it's so the word that's coming to me right now is coaching me. Like you're literally coaching me right now, <laughs> which I, I'm so, I'm so grateful for because it's starting to happen where on Instagram people send messages and mm. the team sends them to me and I can see it's like, I had a dream with you and you told me to do A, B and C and D. And I'm going to be honest. At first I was like weirded out. Like <laughs> well, you guys are weird. Like why are you having weird, but I am. You just help me to understand what's actually happening. So yeah, it's 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 it's, just, it's like your own life, right? Like you have you're going through life, and you have a memory come up, and that that memory pops in to awaken you to a message. We're just a memory that awakens them to oh, spirit, right. spirit's calling, right? Because that's who we represent for those particular people, and you're you know, people see you as somebody who has a powerful connection. Yeah. So when you're showing up in their dreams, they're like, oh my god. Danny's telling me this, he's got a higher power, it must be true. So it's a way until you build your own frequency and safety inside of yourself, you allow, you borrow the certainty of somebody else's energy. So people are always bor borrowing your energy, my energy, that frequency until they build it inside of themselves. I love that. And so it's, and so it, there's nothing to us if energy's free it yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah, take yeah. our energy yeah. so i'm like have that a dream about me yeah, yeah, yeah. dream whatever until you can really just replace the idea of of that frequency with your own connection I love and that. so they're just building it so yeah so my journey began yeah. with my mother passing and mm. and with you know me how long ago was that six years six years oh wow yeah six it's going to be seven in may but my, that's where my journey began. So if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, you'll know that I'm a strong believer and advocate for plant medicine and its ability to awaken and heal the mind, body, and soul. It's a belief that is deeply rooted in my own personal experience with both ayahuasca and psilocybin mushrooms. And many of you for years have always asked me, you know, Danny, where do I go? Where, who can I trust? And there is only one place I would ever recommend or put my name behind, and that is Reunion. Reunion is a place where you could set yourself free from whatever is holding you back from living the life of your dreams. It's a beachfront, beautiful property that is in Costa Rica. And what I love about it is that it's not for profit. And this is the only thing that they focus on is the preservation and the safe utilization of these beautiful, wonderful medicines. And I only feel comfortable putting my name behind it because I am personal friends and have journeyed with some of the members of the facilitating team. Guys, I'm honored to have aligned myself with them to create the Higher Self Scholarship Fund. It's a fund whose purpose is in helping people who don't have the means to experience these medicines and yet have the desire to. And every time one of you books a retreat with Reunion, $100 from every booking is going to go into this fund and we will be sharing this money with people on a monthly and bi-monthly basis. So help me help others by using the code Danny Reunion when you go to register register to experience your own life transformational journey. To find out more, go to reunionexperience.org and get ready. Okay, guys, first time ever, the weirdest but not weirdest thing <laughs> happened. We're in the middle of the story and the sound system goes off. So we're going to just... Yeah, right when I was talking about broken spirit, yeah. how we have to have a broken spirit to really connect well, it happens automatically when a loved one dies, our spirit becomes broken. And that's why it's so easy to connect with them. And that's why generally most people's awakenings are with the death of a loved one. Yeah. And that, yeah. That's, that resonates so much with me, Peggy, because when my mom died, it wasn't as if I was like um, missing her or wanting to connect with her. What it was was that I was so mad no. i was so mad at the f at, at a whole bunch of things i was mad at religion i was mad at and then but i was mad at myself for not loving my mom while she was here Aww. for not being able to connect with my mom like mm. there was always like this wall like this little barrier and and then that's what started to like 
wake me up and re- help me realize like I'm just really not happy. Yeah. Like I'm not happy. And and that's when, you know, Mother Aya called me and everything yeah. started. Well, I think no, no, no. I think anger is really powerful when you're recognizing it, especially with death, right? So mm-hmm. with my second brother, when he was killed, I was so angry because I felt it was unavoidable. You know, I mean, I felt it was avoidable. Mm. And I I felt that you know, people saw his car run off the road and, um, but nobody stopped, you know, to they, help him, to help him. They called the police, but nobody stopped. Right. So it felt like it could be, it could have been avoided. Mm. And so I was really enraged about it. And so that kind of, I think also led to my desire to really connect to him. Yeah. I love yeah. that. And, um, and how did you end up finding peace in all of that? Well, I think for me, it was actually then connecting with him um, because I, I mean, I don't know if I shared this with you before, but like my first brother, when he was killed, um, I had a dream about it that he would be killed. And then two weeks later, he was killed. And in that process of, of him dying, there were a couple of things that happened. I had, I had clearly flown home for the funeral. And while I was there, I got a phone call from my roommate saying that she was kicking me out that she was buying the condo. And I was like, what? So there I am mad, right? So here's anger in this. And so I end up, she moved me into a guy's house, my the guy I was dating for seven years, who she knew I was going to break up with. So I moved in this situation where, okay, now I really have to act. So I get there, I get out of his place and just go get this apartment. There's nothing in the apartment except a Bible, right? Completely empty apartment. I'm really brokenhearted. So I sit down and I say to God, what am I supposed to do? I have, I have nothing, right? And I lost my brother who was like a, such a protector of me. And I remember opening the Bible, reading a verse, and then I just remember kind of nothing except coming to. And what I mean by coming to, my face was, my head was tilting to the ceiling and all this, it was like I was having a can opener opening the crown of my head. All this heat came into my body. And I just was broke out in a sweat. And when I woke up, my hands were in a mudra, and which I didn't even know what a mudra was. Mm-hmm. And um, but all I felt was this peace, coupled with this shock of like, oh my God, what is this? And where's my rosary? Right. right, right <laughs> and right. then grabbing the rosary. And I all that calmness came over me. So when my next brother was killed, I thought, oh my God, that's I never ever lost the connection with Dave, there was all that pain was taken away. I've never cried for him, which is amazing when you lose somebody that close to you to never cry again after that experience. And I thought I want to have the same experience for with Larry who had just passed. So I remember laying in bed with Bobby and I remember thinking to myself, how did I do that with Dave? And I remember cocking my head as I'm asleep. And, um, and I just thought, I'll just go to sleep. And as I started to fall asleep, I had that falling sensation. Mm. And as I was falling, I got scared. And in my mind, I called out, hey, Bobby, grab me. I'm falling. I'm falling. And this voice comes in and says, just let go. And I was wow. like, oh, my God. And so I just let go. And I landed. And when I landed, there are my two deceased brothers together. And I see them the same way I'm seeing you. And I'm so excited. I'm going, oh my God, I see you. And then I'm like, how do I look? <laughs> and I lifted up my arm and there's nothing there. So I'm like, oh my God. And, and then so my brother started oh telepathically speaking to me. And my brother Larry says to me, you have to help mom and dad through this. And um, <laughs> you're giving me, you're giving me, I'm remembering a moment right now that Are you? you're, you're helping me to understand what actually happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and so I'm like, okay, I remember the, all right. And he said, and when you get back to Kansas City, because we were living in Kansas City and I was at my parents' house in Iowa. And so he said, when you get back home to Kansas City, I have a surprise for you. I'm like, okay. And I woke up. And when I woke up, um, I was like, I came back into my body. I saw my toes and I woke up and I was like, oh my God, Bobby. And I woke up Bobby and I'm laughing and I'm crying and telling him I just saw my brothers. And, and he's like, listen, maybe don't tell mom and dad that you had an out-of-body experience, right. you know? Maybe just tell them you had a dream about them. A dream, yeah. I'm like, okay, great. And so um, and so it began. There's a whole bunch of more things that unfolded. Sure. But that was that's basically how your my... That's how it started. That's yeah. how it started. Yeah. 
You know what's so crazy? You just gave me. You saw what happened, guys. Yeah, I, you, yeah. I shook. Yeah, that, that's that's my 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 body tends to move like that when stuff happens. But I remember as I was letting go of the energy of fear. Mm. Peggy, I think you'll understand what I'm about to say. It's like it's not a dream. It's like you're living in it. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a dream is different, but we go into the state where you're living in this thing, this, yeah, it's like you're all, yeah, it's, it feels like you're actually experiencing it. Yeah, it's real. It's, it's you know, real. That's why they call them prophetic dreams, Pre prophetic. It's actually real. You, you know, you can have them as prophecy about the future, uh -huh. but it's actually, you're in that reality. That's where you, you are. In that moment. So let me tell you, there's been two, there's been a couple, but I'm going to tell you two of them. Um, but this particular moment that I'm speaking about when I was letting go of fear, I remember that I was walking down the street and a man was following me. And then I turned the corner and the man was still following me. And then I walked into the house and the man was inside of the house. And I remember feeling fear, like feeling fear. And I remember, and, I, and I'm getting the goosebumps right now, and I remember saying, who are you? Mm. And then the man said to me, that's not the right question. And then the man disappears. And then I go into another room and I, and the, and I say, who are you? And then the man says, you're not asking the right question. And then the man disappears. And I think we were in the garage and he was leaving. And I said, tell me who you are. Who are you? And the man says, the question is, who are you? And phew, it's like, and like I woke up. Oh, And I'm wow. in like sweat. Like I'm talking like if somebody grabbed a wow. bucket of water. And, yeah. and I, 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 I'm realizing that what was happening in that moment is the energy of fear was, was being released from me. I was like letting go of it mm -hmm. because half the stuff I used to be afraid of, I don't even think about it anymore. Mm. You know? Yeah. But I'll t can I tell you another one? Yeah, 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 please. I'll tell you another one that I, I told Jen's parents about this one. I think I told Jen's mom, I think. But f my first time flying to London to, to meet her, I am in like a Las Vegas room with, for like celebrities or like s stars or musicians or something. I don't know. And, um, and all of a sudden... I hadn't met Jen's mom. I hadn't met her. I hadn't met anybody, but I'm ushered into this, this room where like these like older people are and they're like putting their makeup on in front of like, you know, like those, those old school light bulbs, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. In the mirror. And this is a dream? But it's not, but it wasn't a dream. Right, I was right, like, I was I mean, living I mean, it. But you're, okay. Yeah. I was living it. Yeah. I literally was living it. And then I'm like looking at them and I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm like, <laughs> is this Jen's family? You're like, what is this, right? And then like all of a sudden I'm transported into the living room and one by one they come up to me and they're like, yeah, he's all right. But no, no, they didn't say anything. They just looked at me like one by one. One by one. It was like a, like an, uh, like a approval or something, like a welcoming or something. It, you know what it feels like to me? What? It feels, it feels more like you're being shown and your guides are coming in and saying, that part of you is fine. That part of you is fine. That part of you is fine. You're all, you're okay. You're going to be okay. They're going to accept you. So I feel- Because that was my greatest fear. Because I feel like it was more your guides coming in, looking at you. Okay, wow. The looking sense. in the mirror. Right. Looking in the mirror, looking at the fake, the face you're putting on. <laughs> and these are the different parts of yourself. <laughs> these are the different parts of yourself. Peggy. And we're approving of you. You're fine. You're going to be loved. Yeah. You feel that? Yeah. I, I do dream interpretation too. <laughs> no, this is good. No, thank you for this. Thank You're you for welcome. this. Yeah. No, because this whole time it was like, and you know, and, and yeah. you know, that was my, my fear. My fear mm. was number one, she's white. So that yes. was like a whole thing for sure, me. That it, number yeah. two, she's the tall. Thing. That was a whole thing for me. Number three, like. They're, remember, a di they're a different culture. I remember going through every one of these with you. Remember, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, wow, <laughs> wow. that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, how powerful. That's what it was. But it, but that's your spiritual connection, your desire, and our loving support of our guides and ancestors, and you know, 
And it's really powerful once you open yourself up. There are a lot of helpers yes. who are here to support us. Okay, so for me, my journey started with plant medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I know you know about plant medicine, right? But I also know that that's not necessarily everybody's journey, right? Right. If somebody is out there listening right now and they want to start diving into their spiritual gifting, connecting to their spiritual guides, and and by the way, I really believe that we are transmuting at, at a, a frequency right now. So I, I I would I would love like if you're out there like really tap into this right now, um and 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 feel it and really listen to what Peggy's going to tell you. But how could they start that process? Well, I think. First of all, to your point, plant medicine is a, a great way if you have the right facilitator or shaman to support you in opening that up. Um, and then the ongoing understanding that's needed with what's once you're cracked open, right? Yeah, with the yeah. integration of that. And then there's also, which is just the way that I learned, which is just starting to, one, either you're already there at that point where you just start to lean in and trust yourself and lean more into that. So for me, it was just my one-on-one -on -one with the guides. And then there's books, like I wrote a book about it on intuition, the little book of big promises. Oh, wow. And it's about you, because the understanding is, is that our life experiences, why they lead us there, they can also block us, right? It's a heavier frequency or vibration. So the book is about removing those, those obstacles, understanding, gaining the lessons from them, at the same time, opening you up to understanding how you're wired and once you understand your frequency and how you're wired, you can start to lean into that to trust it. So that's what that book is about. And then I also teach workshops on intuition. That's like my, it's, it is really the gift that I've been born to do. Beautiful. I really do believe that in helping people connect themselves to themselves. So those are a couple of ways that I use. Breath work is also another way in which people can start to have spirit move through them and release things and start to feel more things. So there's a lot of you know, I know you do breath work. I do breath work. There's yeah. a lot of things out yeah. there. Um, and any sort of anything that is inspiring to you to start to practice and lean in daily meditation. There's, these are all ways to start to get to know yourself and to know how spirit speaks to you. I, I love that. And you know what just came to me, Peggy? So often I feel sometimes like a broken record. Mm -hmm. because it's like we keep sending the same message, but I think that there's something in people's minds where they don't really understand that the answer is not in me or in you or in anybody else, that it's, it's in them. Mm -hmm. They just have to harness that, that practice. They have yeah. to harness that, that time, right? They have to give themselves the space to really connect and really, and, re and really listen. What do you think it is that blocks people from that? Well, I think the most obvious one is they don't know how to do that. You know, they're in their head. So they don't know how to travel from their head to their heart. So the, so in, you know, just like the free stuff on my Instagram is just a grounding practice. Just go to your heart, breathe, release, right? And that just starts to get you out of your head and start to into the body to feel more. So it's just because they don't know and, or they think you can do it. I can't do it. That's fine for the two of you, but there's no way. And, and all, once you understand your own mind and how that's stopping you, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. You know, then, then there's so many remedies and ideas and ways to get around it. Absolutely. Because we all have these moments like where a moment is like, oh, you have a thought that comes in and says, call my kid or, oh, wow, pick up the milk. I forgot the milk, right? Where does that come from? And most people think it's just us. Well, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, right? But everybody can relate to having those non-linear connections or with other people. I was just thinking about you and the phone rings, right. right? What is that? Okay. All those experiences were like telephone wires, right? And lines, they're all there. But once you start to get those and start to ask for more of them, mm -hmm. spirit will give you more of them. Mm -hmm. And the more you lean into it, the louder that frequency or vibration becomes. I love that. Just it, start to play with it. It's, yeah. It's so interesting. That happened to me this morning. Yeah. This morning, I'm driving with my son, Micah, and I'm driving um, to take him to his mom's house to pick up some clothes. Hey. And Zoe, my dog's, the, the dog, my old dog, Zoe, uh -huh. uh, uh, comes up to me. And I just see her, and I see Zoe playing and so forth and so on. 
And and for some reason, I think of you know, wow, someday Zoe's gonna gonna go, mm. and that's gonna be really hard on the kids, right? Yeah. And um, and then you know, Micah happens to walk out of the front door, and Zoe runs out. And Zoe runs out and she's just playing and like my heart is just filled with joy like to see Zoe. And I like get out and I'm like, Zoe! And she's just so excited Aww. to see me because she misses me obviously, yeah, you know? Yeah, clearly she's yeah, in her mind. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I'm like hugging her and loving her and I see the most beautiful smile in my son's face mm. because he loves animals. Oh, wow. And I wasn't planning on taking him with me to, I, I'm going to go to L.A., uh -huh. And I have a podcast I'm, I'm going to do with Caesar Milan, the dog oh, whisperer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And Micah is like, I like to call him the little mini like animal whisperer mm. because Micah animals just love Micah. And wow. I thought in that moment, I haven't even talked to him about it, but I thought in that moment, like, I think I want to take him with me so that he could experience Oh that. my God. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You know, kids are the easiest to tap in. They're already doing it. And I think once you kind of like remind them, you can talk to spirit. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, this, you know, God told me this or God told me that or whatever. And, you know, all my kids were really open when they were little. Wow. Yeah. I mean, in fact, Renzo, who's kind of like our family dog whisperer, pet whisperer, he finds the coolest animals ever. Uh -huh. When he was four, he comes to me and says, hey, mom, what's a soul? I'm like, I never use these words. I'm like, why are you asking me what a soul is? And he's like, well, there's a bad man in my head who says he can take mine. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> right? What? Like every mother's nightmare. What? I'd been doing this work for maybe a year, maybe two years. And Renzo's the kind of kid who loves to be scared. He loves to be scared. Like He loves to be scared. He loves to be scared. Like, scare me. Like, what, what you got? You know? Really? Right? So he's like, yeah, what are you going to do about it? There's a bad man in my head who likes to be scared. What are you uh -huh, going to do about uh -huh, it, mom? Uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Now you're getting his vibe. Yeah. I grab his little hand. I march him in my office. I set his butt down on the floor. And I'm like, okay, we're going to figure this out. So I start saying all these things. He's like, nope, he's still there, mom. Nope, he's still there, mom. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and I'm like, so I go to my guides and I'm like broken. I have no, what, I don't know what to do. How do I protect my son? And so they bring in this analogy. And Renzo liked to play baseball at the time. And so like, okay, Renzo, imagine you're at a baseball field. Close your eyes and imagine you're at a baseball field. And now step up to bat, you know, put your helmet on in the batting, you boom, you hit the ball, it's a home run, you're running around the bases, everybody's cheering, yay, yay, Renzo, you cross the plate, home run. Okay, now you're up to bat again. This time, take your helmet off and put all these rocks in your helmet. Put your helmet back on, get up to bat again, here comes the pitch, you hit it in slow motion and the ball dribbles and you run so slow, you get knocked out. Renzo, keeping that bad man in your head is like having rocks in your helmet. It's going to slow you down in life. That's Mic it. drop. And he's like, he's gone, mom. Really? And then he's like, who's that man over your head? He could see the man telling me all this. And I'm like, there's a man over my head? I'm thinking to myself. Wow. And so I ask, who's the man? And, and he said, I'm your guide. And he said, you're my guide? And he said, yes. He says, what's your name? He says, my name's Simon. And Simon says, do what your mother says. <laughs> <laughs> so to this day, wow. Renzo will from time to time ask me um, for a Simon. message from Simon. From Simon. Yeah. Wow. But kids are so, they can see it all. They can feel it all. And I'm sure your kids are so dialed in. And I love that he's already connecting with the animals. And yeah, yeah he's, yeah. I can feel how much he feels. Your oh, son. Micah feels. He feels he everything, feels right? Everything. Yeah. 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 He feels so he's, yeah, he's a little love, like he, just a little squishy little is. love. Who, yeah. So him, he just really needs to like really feel safe in his own energy and really yeah. grounding him will really help him. Okay. But animals are good, so good for him because they make him feel comfortable and safe. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. That's going to be an exciting podcast. We're going to have to listen to that one. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's funny. That's one of those things where I remember, you know, couple years back like I, I was just a big fan of caesar's work mm -hmm. 
Um, anybody who owns a dog know, know who yeah, Caesar I mean, Milan his is. Show his show incredible. was just incredible. Yeah. And I remember thinking like one day I'm going to have him like at an event or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Because I just really admired his work. Yeah. Because I could correlate, I could correlate what he was saying with dogs and how mm -hmm. it relates to human beings. Oh, interesting. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and then, yeah, we ended up paying each other up on Instagram and like we're excited. We're going to film this podcast. We're really. That's so cool. I think I met him years ago at maybe a, one of the Hay House events. When I was an author there, uh, okay. and I think he, I don't know, I don't know if he was a guest speaker or if they actually published one of his books as well. Okay. But I remember just briefly meeting him. He was such a celebrity. That was when his, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. was like, oh my God, Caesar's yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's yeah. such an amazing human. Hey guys, before you continue listening, I wanted to introduce you to the sponsor of this episode, Athletic Greens. I decided to give AG1 a try because I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great, boosts my energy, and supports my immune system. Uh, especially for someone like myself that fasts all day, I take it in the morning before starting my day and it makes me feel incredible. It makes me feel like I'm doing something good for my body. It also helps me save an enormous amount of time and it makes my life so much easier with just one scoop in the morning. So it makes it a very seamless and easy daily habit for me. Just one serving of this stuff, AG1, supports my long-term gut health. It has 75 high quality vitamins in it, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. So if you're looking for a simple and cost-effective supplement routine, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of their vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. So just go to athleticgreens.com backslash Danny. That's athleticgreens.com backslash Danny and go check it out today. You know, speaking of celebrity, my God, this is perfect the way this is all tying in. It's like we're on this thing where it's like, because even the, the Zoe thing, anyhow, I'm just having a moment right now. Because I was thinking to myself, how do I tie in celebrity? And, I, and I'm going to ask this because, you know, when, when we go to your website, you've yeah. worked with yeah. incredible people. Yeah. Right. And you can do PeggyRomito.com, right? Romito. Romito. Yeah. R-O-M-E-T-O. E-T-O. -E yeah. So you've worked with, I mean, it's there. Yeah. It's on the website. On yeah. The website. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I have testimonials from Deepak Donna Chopin, Karen, Donna Deepak, Karen, the Demi Willis Moore. family, everybody. Yeah. Demi Moore. Yeah. So what I want to get to is, is so often, you know, celebrities are just people, mm -hmm. yes. just human beings, yeah. you know? Um, and yet when... Let me let me use my words correctly here. If you're dealing with you know um, self doubt, mm -hmm. if you're dealing with worry, if you're dealing with fear, if you're dealing with, if you're at a point in your journey where you haven't discovered how beautiful and powerful and wonderful you really are, mm -hmm. sometimes you look up to you know these celebrities, mm -hmm. and and in reality they're you, mm. they're you. We're all each other. Yeah, just you know, at different parts of our journey and different parts of our soul's journey, you know, if somebody is out there right now that would, would, would say, you know, I want to expand my life. Right. And when I look at a celebrity, I look at someone who has expanded parts of themselves and maybe they had a question like, how could I expand myself, my reach, what I'm offering, you know, how much I earn? Like they hear it from me all the time, but yeah. I'd love to hear your perspective. Yeah, I think, um, I think first of all, it's being able to, one, is like to really trust yourself and to have that, that unwavering focus and power that I'm going to make this happen. I don't necessarily need to know how I'm going to make it happen, but I'm going to make it happen. And then with that, you put in the daily actions of no matter what, and then you trust you know, you might have your five-year plan. Okay, God, this is what I want to do. Now bring it to me and just start to do the daily actions and then watch those synchronistic events, right, that unfold and say, go do this and go do that. And you trust. And the more that you trust, you get more the validation or the evidence that it's occurring, mm -hmm. right? And then you get support along the way. And I always say, if you don't have the confidence or the certainty borrow somebody's, call somebody who believes in you, have a mentor around you who goes, oh my God, you can do it or have a life partner and shy away from the ones who don't believe you, who are going to tell you you're going to fall on your ass. Like don't share with them because their frequency 
awakens the doubt in you. Mm -hmm. So stay away from there's there's I'm not saying to be blind to the problems. I'm saying just have a healthy dose of like being able to like when you're going to approach somebody who you know thinks differently than you, which is important, and be able to take in their information or their advice as information. That's one perspective. Mm -hmm. Like have it be a perspective, an information perspective, as opposed to the truth. Right. Right. And if you're somebody who's really wobbly, don't even go to those people. Stay away from them. They are dream killers. Mm -hmm. Right. And it could be a parent sometimes. I mean, my husband talks about it all the time. His success came from being a reaction to his mother's, you're going to fall on your ass. But that was her way of saying, stay safe. Keep, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think for everybody, it's kind of different, but you have to lean into where you're going to get support. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. What are your final thoughts? You know, that whatever, uh, whatever's well, coming to you to share. I, th you know, first of all, I love you. I, I love, love you your too. questions. I love your podcast. Like we're like, there's so much synergy here. Yeah. We could talk forever. Yeah. So I'm just curious, like, um, Oh, you can ask. I'm gonna ask you. Oh, a let's do this. Can All I right, let's do this. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll flip the podcast now. How's that? <laughs> yeah. So I'm just curious for you, like, um, how do you know for yourself, like, when you're really telling the truth or doing the right thing for somebody else? Like, I know clearly you have a level of success for yourself, but when you're guiding somebody else, how what happens for you in that intuitive process? You know, it's interesting. And let's do both. What happens for you? And then is it different when you work with somebody else? For me personally, it's always been the sense of absolute knowing. Like what you just said, if you guys could just rewind to what she said, all of that little explanation landed with me so well. I'll give you this example, Peggy. I, I always used to see, like, I remember one time I went to, you know, Luis Miguel? Yes. So the yes. singer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one time I went to, this was a long time ago, eight, nine years ago, before my journey began. And I remember I went to Luis Miguel's concert, and I remember looking around, and I thought, like, someday people are going to come hear me speak, like they come see Luis Miguel sing, right? Now, I was still in my wounded self. I was still in my ego back then. It was for the wrong motives, you know, well, the right motives at the time, however you want to call it, you know, mm -hmm. I was there in my journey. But I still always kind of knew, like, it's some way, shape or form, I'm going to have a voice. And this is what I'm going to do. Fast forward to what I do today and, and, you know, awaken and all of these things. It's like, I could, I could authentically say it's coming from a space of it's all just happening now. Mm. And it's all just happening from this desire to help people get out of the pain and suffering that they're living in that mm. I know that I was once living in. Yeah. And I think that's what I think you do so well is when, so when it's your ego, and here's the thing, though all those people who want the celebrity life, you have to have a massive ego. Yeah, you need yeah, to, yeah. because the ego is the world of action. The, we live in the world of action. You have to have a big ego if you want to perform and get somewhere in the physical world, right? Yeah. But then what you did is you work through your shit. <laughs> That's right. And then now you have a template of like, wow, this is what I did. So from that knowing, which when I, when I help people understand their intuition, the divine knower is the one who captures all the other scent. They have the clairsentient, which is the feeling, the clairvoyance, which is seeing, the claircognizance is the knowing, but even the, the all those little senses, right? And the clairaudience, which is hearing, those senses can be hijacked by other things. So you can get wrong. You can have a vision and it can be wrong unless you're tied to the divine knower underneath it all, which just, it cancels everything else out or it all makes sense together, right? So you're the divine knower. And so when you're hearing things and you're always like, boom, it's in your body. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Right. When you're, once you're connected to that, you're rooted in it. Like life is easy. And so if somebody is some, who's hearing things or seeing things, they have to connect it into that body. And that's through doing your own work. And so you're embodied now because you've done all this work. And that's how you are able to hold the energy 
for all these people who are looking for the same thing because you've done it and you already mastered the ego aspect of it because you climbed through the ego here. So it makes sense that when you awaken to the spirituality, you can hold the container for everybody else's ego as they awaken it. I re was reversed. I awakened my spiritual, didn't have a strong ego, and now fucking 25 years later, I can finally <laughs> hold the energy of the ego of a bunch of people. I couldn't wow. do it before. I could only work one-on-one -on -one because it was too much. Even when I would do Hay House events and there'd be a thousand people in the room, my body would just like, I'd be like this. It would take, I'd, ha I'd be in the hotel room just shaking. I'm going, what is happening? It, and spirit would say, we're moving the energy through you so you can hold the container of the room. Mm. And I literally would just lay and my whole body would just convulse. Mm. And But I had spirit guiding me as to what's going through. You don't have that shit. Mm. <laughs> You've got the ego dialed in. Because that's where I was from. But I know that world. From. Right. Exactly. Right. And so it's so interesting. We've arrived at the same yeah, yeah, place, yeah, 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 yeah. but we've started in different directions. Yeah. So yeah. fascinating. Yeah. It's so, it's like, it's so, it's so interesting. Like my God, this is just right. Isn't it my moment? Yeah. It was. It is a divine moment because I was just thinking this today or the other day. Like you know, I'm always thinking of how to communicate the message, yeah. right? And so I, I thought about this. Like I remember where like brands were so important to me, mm -hmm. you know. And like look what I did. It's like this, like you know. And, and wow. now, like I, I thought about this message. I thought about this message of of sharing with people is like the more that like the you like leaves, mm -hmm. the the less that you're connected to what's outside of you. Yeah, you know the, this this the smaller self that needs this attention or validation, you know? And I guess what you're saying is so true is because since I like lived in that world for so long, yeah. it's like when I see it, when I feel it, when I see any kind of ego, I understand it now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, and, and it's important yeah. because other people who haven't traveled you, you know, your path are looking for your social proof. That, which that, is that's ego. Thing, which is right. So you have to have it. Right. You may not like it anymore because it represented, right. you know, the old you, mm -hmm. but you're in, you're encountering it differently now. Yeah. Right. And that's why you have the success built in a new way now. Yeah. But both all are important. Yeah. You know, and um, so we just arrived there differently. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I appreciate that. You know what else I think was a big part of my journey? Is that I don't know if you know this, but I'm a reflector. So and uh, um, oh, in human design, in human design. Oh, okay. So what I started to find was that, like after an awaken or after a, a ceremony or you know whatever that I participated in, it would take me two or three days to recover, because mm. everyone's energy was just like. And now I just know I know how to how to uh, protect yeah. my energy. Yeah. And just stay in my grounding and stay in my truth and not allow anything that doesn't need to come in, come in. And, and it just feels much, much better. Well, that that's ways. a powerful lesson, yeah. right? Because it's so easy to get fried or burned out or exhausted. Because even the ego loves that. Well. Like, you like, know what I'm saying? Look what I did. Like, oh my God. <laughs> look so at all this. Oh, but I feel everybody's <laughs> energy and. Oh my God! It's like I have to be the gatekeeper. Everybody's fucking energy, and it's a, you know. <laughs> I kind of see myself. You know, you know, like, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I've I've been there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, like, yeah. it's like sometimes it's, but it's a real thing. It's a real. I a understand real, but it. It is a real I thing. I understand it. Yeah, yes, but sometimes, yeah. like even like in even like in ceremony, like sometimes I'll, I'll hear people and they'll say things like, you know, for me this was all about like you know channeling and holding space for everybody else's <laughs> energy, which is like okay, but what are you deflecting? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, yeah. you know, everybody has their path, right? And I know. So for some I people, know. they don't feel safe yet. Yeah. And they have to, and their conditioning is, let me be there for you. Yeah. Until they get exhausted of doing that and they go, wait, what about me? me. Which is, you know, so everybody has yeah. their path to dis their, their own path. discovery. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. anyway. Anyways. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for thank having you. me. Thank Kimberly you. sends her love. Yes. You know, from I want to have her. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, yeah. if anything, how many kids does she have? She has six kids. They I have six like, kids. Six I, kids. I, I think just that alone is a conversation. <laughs> like <laughs> how you do that. That alone is a conversation. Yes. Yes, yeah. exactly. For sure. Yeah. 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 No, she would love to be here. They're all in an RV. Oh. Traveling. Oh, beautiful. So, yeah. So, 
vacation without a vacation, so to speak. Gotcha, <laughs> it's gotcha. never a vacation when you're all of those energies. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do people get a hold of you? Um, well, they can watch our Bathroom Chronicles podcast That's with right. Kim and I, right? That's right. Yeah. But my website, basically, PeggyRomito.com. Yeah. It's B-E-G-G-Y-R-O-M-E-T-O. Or on Instagram, I'm there, and also on Facebook. And Beautiful. Yeah. Fantastic. But thank you so much. Thank you. So much fun yes, connecting with you. for sure. Yeah. And, and I, and I want to say something, guys. Um, Peggy is one of those people that, you know, when someone that I love and care for needs you know, some realignment, some work with, you know, after integration, some, 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 maybe some, some, some healing of energy, some answers. I, I, I Peggy is one of those people, you know, wow. she really well, is. So, you. so you're hearing it from me. You can trust her. Uh, but most importantly, feel into the trust that you have for yourself. And if that resonates, she's Perfect advice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next week on another episode of The Higher Self. Thanks for watching this week's episode of The Higher Self. If you heard something in this week's episode that caused you to think maybe, just maybe, there was a higher potential for your life. Maybe there was a potential to earn and receive financial freedom, to attract the relationship of your dreams, or to improve your health. That's what we specialize in. We help wonderful human beings like yourself to unravel all of the limiting thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you've been living through so that you can finally tap into your life's truest potential. If you'd like to talk more about that, we invite you to join us on Instagram or Facebook and email us the word discover more. And when my team sees that, they will reach out to you, send you the details of how we could help you on your pathway to a life of abundance, fulfillment, and creating the absolute life of your dreams. Message us right now the words discover more now on Instagram or Facebook, and we'll see you soon.